<laughs> All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, hashtag lose say hard no thirty five. Uh, more substitution and special topics. So I think you're gonna like today's. It's relatively simple. It's not too crazy. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it and see what's up. So I have a function here. It says let f be a function such that the integral from negative six to zero of x f of one third x squared minus five dx <laughs> equals six. Write an equation that can be inferred involving the integral of the function f of u. And notice on the side here, there's an f of u du. I think on delta, there might have been like a special rectangle there in the front to put in there. Uh, so we're going to obviously do u sub. So my u value, I'm going to write u, has to equal one third x squared minus five. And you can write it as, uh, you can write that as x squared over three. It's the same thing. So your du is two thirds x dx. I don't see any mistakes. Are we still okay? All right. I don't see a two-thirds in the expression, so I put a two-thirds in there. If I put a two-thirds in there, what do I put on the outside? Oh, yeah. I don't know why I wrote one-third there. Three over two. So now I have this. So I have three over two, and I'm going to have new limits in a little bit. And I have f of u du. When x is negative six, I'm going to type in a negative six in here. Negative six squared is 36. 36 divided by 3 is, is that 12? And then 12 minus 5? So that's my new lower limit. And then when I plug in a 0, I get 0 squared minus 5. I just get negative 5. Cool? All right, so there it is. So that right now, at the moment, equals, this is equivalent to this one up here. So at the moment, the way it sits, it equals 6. Yay or nay? Yay. All right. So now uh, let's see. Notice that they don't have anything in the front. So that means I need to get rid of that three halves. So I can get rid of that three halves by multiplying by two thirds. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So integral from seven to negative five of f of u du is equal to three goes into six twice and two times two is four. So there it is. So my a is 7, my b is negative 5, and the integral from a to b of f of u du is nothing more than 4. Nothing crazy, pretty straightforward. What do you guys think? Cool. All right. Uh, did we already do some of these questions in delta or no? I don't remember if I've assigned them. We didn't do a delta on this, or maybe a lot. Hmm. Okay, so then maybe I need to assign some of these uh, because they do they are pretty popular and they're kind of fun too. Uh, so let's see what it says. Imagine if g prime equals f, okay, so uh, the derivative of f is, so the antiderivative of g prime, okay, that's fine. g of 0 is a, g of 1 is b, g of 3 is c, g of 4 is d. Express the value in terms of a, b, c, d, and or d. a, b, c, and or d, okay. Uh, so I'm going to do u sub. I'm going to write u equals 4x squared. And if u equals 4 then squared, then du equals 8x dx. I'm going to put an 8 in the inside. I'm going to put a 1 eighth on the outside. So right now I have 1 eighth integral. I'm going to have new limits of f of u du. Are we still okay? Now I know, look at this right here, guys. I know that g prime equals f of x. Do you guys see that? So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 eighth integral g prime of x, d, oh, g, g prime of u, sorry. g prime of u du. If g prime of x equals f of x, then it's g prime of u equals f of u. That's just a dummy variable. It doesn't matter. Are we still okay, guys? No. Okay. I need new limits. Let's see. When x was negative 1, so I'm going to plug a negative 1 in here. Negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 times 4 is? So that's my new lower limit. When x is 0, 0 squared is 0, and 0 times 4 is? 0. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the antiderivative. So I'm going to write 1 eighth. Antiderivative of g prime is just g. 
and I'm evaluating it from 4 to 0. I'm going to do upper minus lower. So I write 1 eighth, giant parenthesis, g of 0 minus g of 4. So let's see, 1 eighth bracket g of 0 is a, and g of 4 is d. So I would just write it as 1 eighth a minus d. That's it. Yeah, that's it. What, what did you expect? Like more? Uh, like four pages? Five pages? If not, it's not. It's gonna be short. All right. Here we go, guys. Have you guys seen this one yet on the UH quiz? I think it's on the U sub one. One of the two. Whichever one's the one that says U sub. All right. Here we go. <laughs> So I'm going to write u equals a squared minus x squared. Mm -hmm. So du is going to be negative 2x dx. The a is a constant. Uh, I see a 3 there. I'm going to move the 3 to the outside, integrand. And if I move that 3, okay, so I'm just rewriting it, guys. I'm just rewriting it so you guys can see what's up. I'm going to insert a negative 2. If I answered a negative 2 in the front, then I put negative half on the outside. What happened, guys? So why did you do a square That's a, a is a constant. Oh, yeah, it's a constant. Like seven oh, okay. No, please, please ask. But I, it's a constant, so the derivative of a constant is zero. Uh, so here we go. Negative three halves integral. I'm going to put new limits in a little bit, and I'm going to have the square root of u du, which is the same thing as u to the half du. Is everyone okay so far? Yeah. All right. I need new limits. When when x is zero, what is u? So put a squared in there. When x is a, what is u? Zero. Zero. It's nice and pretty. Look how you have a negative in the front. I can just flip the limits and they'll turn to a positive. Integral. Notice that I'm putting a zero in the lower limit and an a squared on the bottom. I'm sorry, a squared on the top. Have I confused anyone? Uh, you when you evaluate an integrand, it's bottom to top because bottom is the lower limit, top is the upper limit. But then you antiderivative is upper minus lower, right? Fundamental term. All right, here we go. Three halves times antiderivative of u to the half is u to the three halves divided by three halves, which is the same as multiplying by two thirds. And I'm evaluating this from zero to a squared. Are we still okay so far, guys? I'm going to factor out that two-thirds. What's three-halves times two-thirds? One. And all I'm doing is upper minus lower. So I'm going to write a squared to the three-halves. Once you have new limits, you don't go back to your x. Remember, guys, minus parentheses zero to the three-halves. Law of exponents comes in. A net power raised to a power. You're going to multiply those suckers together. And you're just going to get a to the third. How do you guys feel? Nothing crazy, right? Because you haven't done calculus in four days. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that you have, to be, you have to be doing calculus every single moment of every single day. But I would try to make it a point, guys, whenever, especially when you have four days off or a week off, 
to do calculus at least a little bit. What do I, what's a little bit? Like 20 minutes every day if you can. If you can't do 20 minutes every day, then at least 20 minutes every other day. So, all right, here we go. Uh, on this one here, hmm. just by looking at the answer choices, I can already tell it's going to be an arc tan. Uh, so let's make it look like that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it can't be arc sine. There's no square root. 1 plus 36e to the 2x dx. All right, real quick. I'll write it right here. d dx of arc tan of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. You know what? Let me turn write it in terms of u. So you guys can, it's easier, I think, to see arc tan of u. 1 over 1 plus u squared du dx. <laughs> All right, so here's what I want. Let's see, what do I want? Let's rewrite it. I'm just, I'm just looking at this right here. What it, say? it says 1 over 1 plus u squared with a du dx on the side. 1 over 1, over one plus u squared with a du dx on the side. That's a negative one. It just didn't come out. The negative one blended with the parenthesis right there. That's our tan. All right. All right, so there it is. Uh, I don't see any issue. Uh, that looks good to me. So my u, yeah. So you don't have to necessarily be like mega smart. You just gotta be just a little clever, just a little bit. And when I'm when I mean clever, I mean I mean like look, one over one plus u squared. That's what you're trying to get this to look like. So you gotta make it look like okay, there's a square there. You gotta know your laws of exponents. You see that it's a 36, and you should be thinking. Well, 6 squared is 36, so you go 6 e to the x, and you put the 2 there. There it is. That 6 e to the x to the 2 is 36 e to the 2x. Yeah. Cool or not cool? Yeah. So then if you make your u equal to 6 e to the x, then your du is going to be 6 e to the x dx. So then I put a 6 in the inside. On the outside, I put a 1, 6. And now look what I have. 1, 6 integral. 1 over 1 plus u squared du. Does it look a lot nicer now? Yes. yes. Antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus u squared is? Arctan of u plus c. And what was u? And we look for that answer. Are we okay? <laughs> All right. So these are going to look a little different. So it looks like uh, if you factor that, x minus 3 is not one of those factors, so you can't do what we just well, you can't factor that out and cancel something. It's not going to cancel. So we got to do something different. So do you remember either long division or synthetic division? It's the same. It's the same oh, no. long division of synthetic. All right. Don't worry. Look, it's really simple. As soon as, why am I doing what I'm doing, by the way? Yeah, let, let's talk about it. I can't do u sub because, all right, guys, focus. Don't write this down because it's wrong. If you were to do u sub, look what you would get, 4x minus 15, and there is no dx, dx yeah. And there is no 4x minus 15 in there. Do you guys see that? Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, we don't know, well, you guys don't know partial fractions yet, but I don't think that would help us here anyways. 
Uh, integration by parts uh, it wouldn't help us anyway. Plus, you guys don't know that. We have to use AB stuff, and this is AB material here. Uh, what else do you guys know? Just how to take the integral flat out? Well, we can't. We don't know. Like, See? So you have to break it down. This is what, relax, all I'm doing is, look, law and division, it's really simple. X times what is 2X squared? 2X. Then you put a 2X squared here in the bottom. And then don't forget that 3. 2X times negative 3 is? Is negative 6X. So then I put that in parentheses and I subtract. That zeroes out. Negative 15 uh, minus, uh, well, now it turns to a positive, plus 6, that's going to be what? No. Uh, negative 9x. Bring the 28 down. Okay. Side note, let's do something you guys do know. 9 divided by 82. 9, you put an 81 in the bottom, you have a remainder 1, so because you subtract, see? So 82 minus 81 is 1, so you either say R1 or you write 9 and 1 9. So that's exactly what I'm doing here now. Let's start again. So x times 2x gives me that 2x squared. That's how I got it. I put the 2x squared in the bottom. I still have that 3 there. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. I put, a, I put that in parentheses. I subtract it, so that means that minus turns to a plus. The two x squares cancel out. You get a negative 9x. I drop down to 28 because it's like zero there. Okay, now we're finally back in, in line. Next, we're not done yet. I have a negative 9x. So what you say, x times what is a negative 9x? So I put a minus 9 like there, and I write a negative 9x down here. And then you go negative 3 times negative 9 is a positive 27. I put that in parentheses, and I'm going to subtract. When you subtract, the 9x is 0 out. What's 28 minus 27? 1. one. So this is a remainder 1, so I'm going to write plus 1 over x minus 3. Are we okay? Yes. See, hopefully this is making sense now. So this right here, does it look simpler if I write from 4 to 6 of 2x minus 9 plus 1 over x minus 3 dx? Yes, it's a lot simpler. Do you guys notice that? All right. No, 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 don't say sure. It, does, it, does it? No, don't say that. That's even worse. Does it look simpler, Chicago? Okay. So what's antiderivative of 2x? No. X squared. Oh, yeah. What is antiderivative of 9? What is antiderivative of 1 over x minus 3? Perfect. Uh, put absolute value in it. Uh, well, actually, we don't need it, but that's fine. Yeah, if you, you don't have to put the absolute value on this one. Just put parentheses, that's fine. But I would always put absolute value because that's like the safe way when you have a negative argument because you can't have ln of a negative argument, right? All right. Uh, what questions do we have at the moment, guys? It hit me. Because it's linear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So the question is, when do I know it's an ln and when do I not know it's an ln? If you have 1 over w squared plus 2 dw, if I do the antiderivative of this, is this an ln? No. It's not because you don't have a linear in the bottom. It's a square. It must be a linear expression, w plus 2. Now, if I do the antiderivative of that, that's ln of w plus 2. Does that make sense? Okay. No, that's a good question, miss. Ask. Okay. All right. Here we go. Upper minus lower. Upper minus lower, 6, so 36 minus 9 times 4, uh, is that another 36? Plus ln, and then 6 minus 3 is 3, minus 9 times 6, oh my bad, yeah, yeah, see, I was checking, I was checking to see if you guys were following. 
4 squared, 16, minus, what's 9 times 4? Plus ln of 1. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got here. The difference between 36 and 54. 36, 46, 56, that's negative 18. Plus ln of 3. Minus 16, 26, 36, that's negative 20. And then ln of 1 is 0. So now, let's see. Minus a negative, that turns to a plus. So negative 18 plus 20 is 2. Plus ln of 3. And there it is. Yay or nay? Yay. Yay. Okay. Yay. All right. What about this one? Yes, it looks like it. All right, guys. Focus, 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 guys. So I'm not going to do U sub because it doesn't make any, there's no reason for it. Uh, so we're going to be doing the same thing again. So, child, what about, like, wow, why? Look. Like this. Wow. You guys are funny. X times what equals 2X? Uh, 2. So put a 2. 2X two in the bottom here. And then I still have that 8. What's 2 times 8? Put that in parentheses. Subtract. 0 plus 1. So that means this integral, notice I'm not changing the limits, is the same thing as 2 plus... 1 over, perfect. And now, antiderivative. What's antiderivative of 2? 2x plus, what's antiderivative of 1 over x plus 8? From negative 7 to e minus 8. So do that. Are we okay? Upper minus lower. What happened, Miss Lavelle? I'm listening, Miss. I got you. Two parentheses. E minus 8 close plus ln. The negative 8 and the positive 8 cancel, so you just have ln of E. And then we'll simplify that in a little bit. Uh, and all that is 1. All that is 1 of the, the my upper one. Minus, here comes my lower one. 2 times negative 7. Negative 14. <laughs> plus negative 7 plus 8 is 1 so we got that where I don't know what you're talking about this one over here yeah, there you go. All right. Are we okay so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. So I see 2e minus 16. What's ln of e? No. 1 minus so plus. Minus a negative is a positive. Plus 14. Oh, my pen. And then ln of 1 is 0. So let's see what this is. Negative 16 plus 15, that's negative 1. So 2e minus 1. All right. So you see this one again. Can we do u sub? No, we can't do u sub. What do you think? Well, take a guess. What do you think this one is? No. No. Arc what? It is an arc sign. So the derivative of arc sine of u is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared du dx. So here's what you're going to do. I can pull that negative 3 out. Mm. 
Yeah, it's the product. I can just remember I can just move any constant out. And you can actually also say this could be an arc cosine because the C will heat it up anyways. All right. I am focusing on this. So we're just doing clever algebra, guys. All we're doing is clever algebra. This is what we want. Notice that I have a 1 right before we start that radical or that square root. Right? So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take that square root of 25 minus 9x squared. And I'm going to divide by 25, divide by 25. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to divide that sucker by 5. Why did I not divide everything by 25? The square root of 25 is 5, so now everything's equivalent. Are we okay? Okay, nothing crazy, right? All right, so now here's what I have. I'm going to put the 1 fifth out, so I'm going to put the 5 down there. So I'm going to, I'm going to, look, notice where I put the 5, guys. And I have this. I have, uh, well, you know what? It doesn't matter because I want you guys to see everything. So here's what I see. 1 minus, and then parentheses, and I need to have mm, 3x over 5. That's what we're doing now. And then you just get practice. Practice makes progress. So I have that. So let me rewrite what I have up here. So negative 3 fifths, and I'll slow down, integral, 1 over the square root of 1 minus parentheses 3x over 5 squared dx. I'm going to do a u sub. u equals 3 fifths x. So du equals 3 fifths dx. Notice, notice that you have a 3 fifths here on the outside. I can bring it in. Leave the negative on the outside. So that way I don't have to add anything. So this right here, guys, is your du. Do you guys see that? Yeah. So now I have this. So I'm going to bring it over here. Negative integral 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared du. Now it makes life easy. What's the antiderivative of that? Arc sine. Notice I put a negative because of that negative. Uh, I guess you could have also made a case for arc cosine, but the C eats it up anyways. Arc sine of U plus C. And then bring back what that U was. Arc sine of 3 fifth X plus C. Are we okay, guys? <laughs> I want to say this is from the integration test, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, so here's a heads up. This is where we're going. This is what we will be doing. Remember, guys, we have an exam Friday. Um, just letting you guys know. Uh, this is where we're going. We're going into DPQ. So the way I would write this, look what this wants. This wants f of negative 1, and it gives you answer choices. So the way I would write this, I would write this like this. 2 dy dx plus 3y equals 0. It says, it says 2 f prime. So I'm rewriting f prime as dy dx. And it says 3 f of x, and I'm writing f of x as y. So I'll write that expression in terms of this. I'm going to move, let's see, what's the best method? I'm going to move the 3 y to the right. 2 dy dx equals negative 3 y. I'm going to, no. Because, uh, yeah, let's not do that. I'm going to, if I had an X, maybe, but this, I don't have an X, I have a Y. I'm going to divide by Y, and I'm going to multiply by DX. So you're going to have this. 
2 dy equals, oh, 2 dy over y equals negative 3 dx. So get up to here. This is called separable differential equations. I haven't done anything crazy. So this is on our exam? No. This is what we're go going into. This is uh, differential equations. Are we okay so far? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, I want to get rid of the dy, and I want to get rid of the dx. So the only way to do that is to integrate. When I integrate, here's what I have. I, there's no limits. So I have 2 ln absolute value of y equals negative 3x plus c. It's, I have it over y. You can put the 2 on the outside if you want. And then you can rewrite it as... 1 over. Yep. It's like the other part of my thing. Do you see it? Oh, uh, yeah. I got that. I just think I need to write it out. It's not enough. I'm not All right. I'm going to divide. Bo I, need to, I need to get the y by itself, guys. Yeah. Before I can do that, I need to divide everything by 2. I'm going to divide both like this. C divided by 2 is still a constant. So I'm going to have ln of y equals negative 3 half x plus c. C divided by 2 is still a constant, guys. So don't make life harder on yourself by doing c divided by 2. Because then you're tell telling c, like you're already fixing c to a value. All right, next, what I'm going to do, I need to get rid of that ln. So I'm going to do e. E, whatever you do to 1, you do to the other. So now I have absolute value of y equals e to the negative 3 half x plus c. Here comes your law of exponents. Absolute value of y equals e to the negative 3 half x times e to the c. Can I do that? All right, get it all. If I do this, that's the same thing as x squared times x cubed, right? So notice when you multiply, you just add up the exponents. Notice this was an exponent that's being added up, 3 half x plus c. So I just brought it up into 2. Okay. All right, this that I'm circling, isn't that just some constant? No. Yeah. So that's what's going to get rid of that absolute value there. Because I'm just going to let the situation take care of it, whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going like, to write it like this. Y equals some constant e to the negative 3 halves x. What happened? I, I, I didn't follow that at all. It doesn't matter? No, it does. But this, this here is just a constant. It's some constant. So... The absolute value means it's just positive. This, I'm letting, when I get rid of the absolute value, is because I'm letting my situation determine whether it's positive or negative. Because the absolute value just means plus minus. I could write y equals plus minus some constant e to the negative 3 half x. But why do I want to put a plus minus if I can just let my situation determine whether my constant is a positive or a negative? Mm -hmm. So I, as soon as you get rid of the absolute value, you can just write big constant in the top, in the front, and that absolute value gets absorbed with the C. My situation will determine whether it's positive or negative. Are we okay so far? Yeah. And don't worry, we're going to do a whole bunch of these. Maybe I shouldn't have put this one in here. All right. When X is 1, my Y value is 6. So I come back and I write 6 equal C E to the negative 3 halves times 1. So I divide both sides, so my c is equal to 6 divided by e to the negative 3 halves, which comes up 6e to the 3 halves. Are we still okay? Yeah, I divided by e to the negative 3 halves, e to the negative 3 halves, e to the negative 3 halves. So then I have 6 over e to the negative 3 halves equals c 
If that has a negative exponent, I can just bring it up to bring it to a positive. 6 e to the 3 halves. It tells me right here. X is 1. Yes, miss. Yeah, uh, interrupt Ramita's there and she'll hook you up. Hey, Ramita's, can you hook them up with uh, their envelopes? Just look at, just look for their envelopes. Why, like, are we only looking at it positively because it has a small value? I haven't solved for f of negative 1. Well, no. I'm just... <laughs> My initial statement is 1, 6, so I'm finding C. I haven't found f of negative 1. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's my equation, guys. Y equals, uh, I guess I didn't need, I guess I should have just stopped it. Like, I could have just written it right over there. Uh, no big deal. Look, 6e to the 3 halves, e to the negative 3 half x. So rewriting this, I'm going to write it here on the top. Y equals... 6e to the negative 3 half x plus 3 halves. What happened? It is going to be on your AP exam. Oh, we're, we're starting it. I check to see that it works. Ms. Wilson, I'm going to check. I'm just going to plug in a 1 and I want to see if I get 6. You know, there's nothing to write. Negative 3 half times 1 is negative 3 half. Negative 3 half plus 3 half is 0. E to the 0 is 1. 1 times 6 is 6. It works. So what did they want me to find? F of what? F of negative 1. So I come back and I say F of negative 1 equals 6E. Negative 3 half times negative 1 is negative 1, right? Plus 3 halves. Negative times a negative is a positive. So 3 half plus 3 halves. So I have 6E, 6 over 2. So 6E to the third power. I come back and I look for 6e to the third power. Maybe I did this question harder. Maybe we weren't ready for it. That's about as hard as it gets. This is the last one, guys. This is the last one, guys. No, that's the worst one. All right. No, we're good. We're let's, let's just not do that again, please. They want the antiderivative of one over x squared plus four x plus nine. It is not one hundred percent. Which one? It cannot be ln, guys. This is not a linear expression. It needs to be a linear expression for it to be an ln. It's not e. Well, uh, if it were partial fractions, it could be e. Um, but if you had like a x plus 2 and an x minus 9, but no, that's not. Are we okay? All right. Here we go. Obviously, look, you only have these two and this one, so... Could you think it's probably an arc tan? Yeah. So we probably have to complete the square with the x squared plus 4x plus 9. Chop, how are you going to do that? Like this, guys. Move the 9. See, this is why we take algebra, guys. Take the 4. 4 divided by 2 is... And 2 squared? So I put plus 4 minus 4. This one's 4 balance. I'm just completing the square. I just completed the square. I'm just completing the square, guys. All this is nothing more, really, the first three terms, is nothing more than x plus 2 with a square on it, plus 5. This expression is the same as the expression in the top. Now, why did I do that? Because now I have this, 1 over, and I guess I'll write it the way you guys have it, 5 plus x plus 2 squared. Are we okay? 
Now, what is stopping this from being an arc 10? The 5. That 5 needs to be a what? No, not an X. A 1. So I'll put it here on the side. I'll put it here on the side. DDX of arc 10 of U, that's a U, not an A, is 1 over 1 plus U squared DU DX, just like before. All right, guys, focus, focus, focus. So here I am. I'm going to go... I'm gonna I'm gonna force that five to be a one. Divide by five, divide by five, divide by five. Can I do that? Yes. yes. We're just being clever. One fifth integral of one over one plus parenthesis, write it like this x plus two over square root of five squared dx. Square root of five times square root of five is five. That's what we're practicing right now, miss. The only way to get better is to practice. All right. Are we okay with what we have right now, guys? All right. So on the side, I'm going to go U equals X plus 2 divided by square root of 5. In case you don't know what that is, just make it simpler, guys. Make it simple for you. X over square root of 5 plus 2 over square root of 5. Are we still okay? All right. DU equals 1 over square root of 5 dx. Yay or nay? Okay. I don't have that square root of 5. I'm going to force it. I put it down here. So then I put a square root of 5 up here. Are we still okay? Yes. All right. Look how much simpler it's going to look. Square root of 5 over 5 integral 1 over 1 plus u squared du. Is it simple now? Yes. yes. What's the antiderivative of that? Arc 10. Arc 10 of u plus c. What was u? Yep. Square root of 5 over 5. Arc 10 of x plus 2 over square root of 5 plus c. And then I look for that answer. It's in there. It's letter B. Come on, guys. 1 over square root of 5 is square root of 5 over 5. Come on, guys. Okay. Real quick, before we stop, what is stopping you? Notice, notice, no guys, I need you guys to focus real quick because this is serious. Notice what is stopping you is algebra. You know the basics of, of calculus. You know how to take antiderivatives without having any issues. What's stopping you is algebra. So we need to, guys, the only way to get better with algebra is to invest time. Cool or not cool? So I put a delta math, guys. Uh, hopefully, don't worry, it's just U sub and, and it's, none of, it's none of these hard ones. It's just synthetic, it's just uh, long division ones. So it's pretty basic. And guys, invest time in Cal, guys, please. Just long division. Just rational and long division. They're not going to be extreme. All right, we're done.